You listen closely to me, okay? You're going to ferment. Capish? What am I to do? Welcome back to Method of the Meanness. I'm Burly Mullins, and my fermentation is really sluggish, if not completely stuck. This is the mead that I'm doing for the Great Mead Project, and as you may have seen in my part two, it is disappointingly sweet at this moment. The fermentation is happening, it's just happening at an absolute snail's pace. So what, what am I to do with the stuck fermentation? Well, step one is to figure out the cause of the stuck fermentation. Now, there's a few things that it could be. It could be the nutrients, uh, but given the inclusion of mango, peppers, and some yeast nutrient that I added myself later on, you know, that one's probably not it. It could be improper aeration when the yeast was first introduced. This can lead to poor propagation of the yeast and a sluggish fermentation through the uh, uh, fermentation cycle. But uh, I used the drill with uh, the paddles to get this uh, mix, to get the honey mixed in and get uh, oxygen mixed in as well. So it's not that. Um, the third thing is the yeast. Now there are a lot of things that can influence whether or not a yeast, uh, a yeast culture will um, thrive in a mead. It could be down to temperature, it could be down to the preparation of the yeast, um, and I think this is where I fell flat, um, where getting the yeast ready for pitching. Um, I think this yeast, uh, if you'll remember, it was my first time working with liquid yeast, um, just required a little bit more time and attention than I gave to it. It might have even just been a bad batch. It happens sometimes uh, when the yeast gets going, it doesn't get going. Yeah, what are you gonna do? Um, so since we've narrowed it down to the yeast, and it's probably not the temperature, it's probably uh, the preparation for the pitch, there is one thing to do in this circumstance, and that is pitch more yeast. I could go with the same yeast variety, but shipping on this one took forever. You know, I'm not 100% on the yeast varietal that I picked for this. Uh, it tends to leave a little bit of residual sweetness. And this one I do actually want on the more dry side. I want this one to achieve close to full fermentation. And so for me, that leaves one option. The yeast that I send in when the other yeast has failed. The plan B. EC1118. If it's fermentable, this stuff can ferment it. Uh, it might have a little bit of trouble with malt sugars, like in a beer. Um, but that's, you know, this is a wine yeast, not a beer yeast. And malt sugars are specialized. They require special, uh, specialized yeasts to uh, get full attenuation. So with this in mind, and I will do another nutrient schedule, I will reoxygenate it. I'm just gonna add some EC1118. Now you may be wondering why I didn't add EC1118 in the first place and why I don't use it for every single mead. Well, for the same reasons you want to use EC1118 in this circumstance, I do not want to use it for every single mead. Uh, it tends to ferment to complete dryness. It is a notably clean fermenter. The, there won't be any off flavors from this particular yeast and a very fast fermenter. I do like some of the off flavors that come from the yeast that I picked. Um, I do like some residual sweetness in some, uh, some of my meads. Uh, you'll recently have, you may, might have seen the episode of Thor's Mead that came out pretty recently, where that was still 
fairly residually sweet. It might have still been in either case because of the malt sugars. Um, you know, you almost never get full attenuation with uh, malts. Uh, that's just the name of the game. Um, but in this case, I just need this to ferment. And fast. <laughs> so, I'm going with plan B. So what you want to do is take your packet of EC1118, sanitize it, open it, and put it in some uh, room temperature to lukewarm water. Uh, don't have it be above like 104 degrees, um, or it will kill the yeast. Don't have it below a certain temperature, otherwise the yeast will have a tough time getting started. I don't remember what the minimum temperature is. Um, don't have it below 68, if you can help it. Um, but in this case, we're just gonna go ahead and I've already put it in the water and got the yeast rehydrated. Um, just giving it a little swirl so we can get it all in suspension. You know, I don't wanna leave yeast behind. And I'm just gonna toss it in. This has also been thoroughly sanitized. Cleaned and then sanitized. If it's not clean, it won't be sanitary when you sanitize it. You wanna jostle it, you wanna get oxygen in. I know it's a cardinal sin after you've uh, racked it to introduce more oxygen, but we really need this yeast to properly propagate and get going to finish up this fermentation. There'll be some activity in the airlock, but it, it'll largely be uh, for the yeast that was already there, just being jostled back to life by being swirled. Um, all right, while we wait for this, I'm not gonna have the camera on the whole time. Um, I don't know about you, but um, I've been inundated with ads for Bruzy. Um, which claims to have, you know, a drinkable mead or wine from anything in as little as 5 to 11 days, I think their claim was. Um, well, a friend of the channel has sent a packet of Bruzy Starter. And uh, sound off in the comments below uh, letting me know what you want me to do with it. Do you want me to try to make a traditional mead and test their claims by following their directions to the letter? Uh, do you want me to try to do a pop culture mead um, and use the bruisey yeast, see what, see what happens? Um, you know, uh, one is a little more true to the heart of the channel, but I'll leave it to what you guys want to see in this particular instance. Um, don't forget to like, subscribe, and leave that comment, um, letting me know what you want to see. And that's it for this one. Uh, it's a short video. Um, hopefully it'll be sandwiched between two uh, better videos, <laughs> or at least longer ones. And with that, uh, this has been Method of the Meadness, and I am Burley Mullins. See ya.